Holy undervalued books, Russ. It's amazing. Is the market finally going to do a correction or is this a one-off? Trending books in the comic book marketplace. Hit the like, slap the subscribe. You know we have a giveaway on deck and I have an Overstreet Price Guide advisor. Why don't you start them off at number 10? Number 10 on the list, Star Wars Obi-Wan number one. One. This is brand new this week, and the book on the list is the 1 in 25 Ario Anandito variant. We are seeing $30 average sales on this book, which was released on May the 4th. Butch loves himself some Star Wars lore, and this right here is part of canon officially, and this book follows Obi-Wan as an old man on the plains of Tatooine, preparing himself for the rain, the storm that is incoming. Has it rained there for 20 years? We are going to see him go through his life and journal entry by entry key moments that made him the legendary character in Star Wars canon that we know him to be. What is that Tell us about the timeline that this story is taking place. So this most likely takes place right before Obi-Wan meets Luke Skywalker, and he takes this opportunity to look back over his long and illustrious life and tell us some key moments. This first issue talks about when he's an eight-year-old. We actually get to meet one of his first friends, Garen, sometimes maybe even like the first love of his life, and we even get to see Yoda scolding Obi-Wan back at the Jedi Academy on Coruscant. Star Wars collectors love buying their books during the very beginning of May. May the 4th be with every single one of our viewers and at the list at number 9, Moon Knight number 10 from 2017, hitting $12 average sales, an undervalued book. I suspect up until the recent release of Moon Knight episodes 4 and 5, when we learn a bit more about Stephen Grant, meh, Mark Spector's origin. Now, this Jeff Lemire run is a fantastic read, but has been roundly undervalued. We're seeing a 333% increase in copies sold this week because it explores more of Mark Spector's origin. There are two fantastic variants available for this book that have been off of everyone's radar for a very long time. We have a Tyler Crook variant, a 1 in 25, a glorious upside down Mr. Knight cover, and a Wills Protasio variant that's also a 1 in 25. This is the issue where Khonshu first meets Mark Spector Moon Knight and the Stephen Grant persona is introduced. This right here should have always been worth more than 10 bucks. Feels good to see it finally get its dues. Another book that is finally getting its dues, Legends Number 1, the first appearance of Amanda Waller. Tom and I have both been telling you guys this is a book that has been undervalued for so long, so I am happy to see this on the list again. $160 for a CGC 9.8. I used to buy this book in dollar bins a decade ago and then $2 bins five years ago. And you can still find this book in those bins to this day. We saw an increase of copies sold of 1,250% after it was announced that Viola Davis will be reprising her role in a Peacemaker spinoff. She is the director, Amanda Waller is, of the Suicide Squad. And I'll take you back to the first Suicide Squad movie that everyone's trying to just forget ever happened. They only pulled a few characters from that lineup for future movies harley quinn rick flag and amanda waller amanda waller is too much of a badass to let go so we're reporting a ten dollar average sale and a 1250 percent increase in copies sold i still think this is undervalued and she is such a ruthless but multifaceted character i love seeing her in these things and watching her develop at the list, at number seven, we got the Ronin to talk about. Oh my gosh, TMNT Last Ronin number five finally came out, and I'm so excited that number one is back on no, the list. No, after no, no, Russ, we're actually talking about Frank Miller. Ronin number one from 1983. Okay, well, here's another fantastic one. I love Frank Miller, and this Ronin is an incredible miniseries. It, it, it's really one of the best things that I've read in a long time. $10 average sales, $175 for a CGC 9.8 this week. Selling at the very end of April after it was announced that Frank Miller's teaming up with his creative team to start his own publishing company. A 700% increase in copies sold of Ronin number one on the announcement that Frank Miller presents 
is a new publishing company that Frank Miller and former DC president Dan Didio is collaborating on. It says in the announcement that this project has been in the works for only a few months, not years. It sounds like this was being put together rather quickly, probably because they're seeing the major success that's happening in the independent marketplace. And 45 minutes before we hit the table, we found out that Frank Miller signed a deal with Diamond for distribution. This is awesome that there is an exclusive deal with diamond for this book that means frank miller is really trusting in this company to be able to distribute his books the thing that i'm excited about is they're talking about two to four new series every single year frank miller already has two of them that he's talked about and there are other artists and writers that they are working with it's going to be great to work with frank and i'm looking forward to this imprint now no word yet on what part of the creative process frank miller is going to be part of for these titles but what we do know is that two of his cherished projects are are part of the lineup. Sin City, taking us prior to the original run for a Western-style tale and causing an increase of 700%, the reincarnated samurai, the Ronin, is coming back. Comic fam, this list of 10 is sourced from a larger list, the Trending 20 over on the Key Collector app. You need to be using this app. I use it multiple times a day. Use that code Tom101 on the best comic app in existence, and I don't say that lightly. I use the app every day. Russ just said he does, and so does Butch. That code is going to unlock a free two-week subscription and unlock the app in its entirety. But as much as 98% of the app is entirely free, keys that are cataloged that are worth your time to know to better yourself on the hunt. The con season is rapidly approaching and you need to be up on this marketplace because it's moving quick. Next at the list at number six, Spawn number nine. First appearance of Angela in the Spawn universe, a character that was co-created by Neil Gaiman and Todd McFarlane, which caused many, many years of legal Fights. Medieval Spawn would debut in this comic book, also making the legal battle that much more troubling over the course of multiple decades. I digress because Marvel would end up with the license, the IP, and integrate Angela into Marvel canon. And we have Spawn number nine on the list from 1993 hitting $20 average sales and a high sale of $170 for a CGC 9.8 all because of spec that started back in 2020. So the last time we talked about this book was November of 2020, where we had heard that Thor Love and Thunder was casting a character named Artismia, who a lot of people speculated could be Artemis or Angela. Now we found out a few days ago that Lena Headey, who we all know from Game of Thrones, is absolutely going to be in Thor, and there's much speculation that she could very well be playing Angela. Bonus points, this tough cover in white, white, it gets smudged, it gets black on it, but a lot of people don't know that this is actually an homage to Wonder Woman number 72, the classic Brian Bolin cover. So many rumors, all causing an increase of copies sold of 110% this weekend for shame, comic fam, <laughs> if you do not own Spawn number nine. This is a classic book, Neil Gaiman, Tom McFarlane, what else do you need to know? Other than that Marvel introduced Angela in Marvel Comics in Guardians of the Galaxy number 5 in 2013. That's a $15 average sale, first full appearance, because there was a cameo appearance that took place in Age of Ultron issue number 10 at the very end revealing that Angela was coming into the Marvel Universe. So many people on the hunt this week. Make sure you tag us in your finds so we can give you a shout out. Milgi Comics and Comic Tom 101 over on IG. Well done. IG Master Collector Comics. Congratulations on your Ghost Rider number one. CG GC 4.0, that's a tough book. We also have my good buddy, Noah's Amazing Reviews, showing off his Hulk number one, Ryan Stegman, dual signed SSCGC 9.8. Good job, buddy. We also have Giovanni's comic showing off his Star Wars Tales of the Jedi, as well as Grails to Astonish showing off a Swamp Thing 37 first John Constantine. Next at the list at number five, let's get a spoiler warning on the screen for Moon Knight Episode 6, Spike in a comic book from Thor, issue number 326, debuting in 1982, seeing $20 average sales and a high 9.6 copy selling for $345 in May. 
Now, this is the first appearance of the second Scarlet Scarab, who is the son of the first Scarlet Scarab, who we originally saw in Invaders number 23. This is a 236% increase in copies sold after what we saw in Moon Knight episode 6. I got to hear what the community thinks in the comment section below about Moon Knight and the finale of episode six. I'd answer you to win this Omni-Man variant, a whatnot exclusive of Invincible number one. Help us reach 55,000 subscribers. We have Layla, who is Mark Spector or kind of Stephen Grant's love interest that portrays such a grounding to the character over the course of the series. And in episode six, she takes on the Scarab and becomes an Egyptian superhero. And she kicks ass. The wings are hardcore. And this right here is another situation like Arthur Harrow. We have a character from Marvel lore that they just kind of picked out that has no real connection to the show. But that way they can do some fan service and do something new. And that's what happened this week. This is enough of a character for Funko to make a pop figure and issue it at San Diego Comic-Con for an exclusive this year. If you like the character or if you are a pop collector, be on the lookout for that one. If you enjoy what we do, we've been doing it for almost four years straight. Hit the link in the description. Join the mystery mail call for May. One per box, we're sending out a Starlight Ben Templesmith variant on the original run of Boys number seven. This is the first appearance of Stormfront in comics, who is likely going to reappear in Boys season three, which drops in June. So we're getting you ahead of the curve and getting you a glorious cover in your box. And that's not all. Should we break the news and tell them about the other major book we're sending out one per box? Comic fam, we are incredibly excited to announce that we have got Herogasm number one with a variant cover by Johnny Desjardins. This is the first appearance of Soldier Boy, who will be played by Jensen Ackles in the new season. It's great, and we are excited to bring this to you in the mystery mail call. Very big warning this month because the box is definitely leaning more mature. Herogasm is a very mature book, but it's a big key. So we're going to put mature stickers on there to protect anyone who's opening this box with you. But comic fam, it's boys. It's here. Get ready for season three. Join the community with two big boys keys. And at the list of number four, let's chat about a real life superhero. Number four on the list, Assassin and Son, number one. This book came out in 2020, and Tom and I talked about it then. We are seeing $8 average sales on news that this book has been optioned by a major movie studio. We're seeing a 2,400% increase in copies sold after State Street Pictures picked this up to bring to the screen. And I confirm with Scout Comics that there is an A-list director. That's a quote attached to this title. And this is a comic that has a very unlikely chance of seeing an issue to and beyond because of the unfortunate untimely demise of the writer so those of you that have been watching this list with me and tom for a while may remember that two years ago we were talking about the wwe former wrestler shad gaspard who tragically died while trying to save his son from drowning in an accident he was the writer of this book him and his son were pulled by a riptide on venice beach and the quote is that when they were going out to save him and his son. There was only enough time to save one of them. And he was screaming, save my son, save my son. He put his son's life first through him to safety and unfortunately drowned. This book came out after and the proceeds of the tribute book, which are still available on Scout Comics, 100% goes towards his family. In an almost prophetic fashion, this story follows a bunch of assassins and one of their sons has to take on the mantle. It is unfortunate that the book was cut so short and I really hope we can see this story explored in full fashion on the screen. And now at the list of number three, a book that we have brought to the mic so many damn times, stating over and over to seriously consider the potential. It's undervalued. And with the Obi-Wan Kenobi trailer dropping this week, we are going to see Obi-Wan reprise his role. We're going to see Darth Vader going full Darth Vader prime. We have Star Wars number two from 1977. The first appearance of Obi-Wan in story, Han Solo, Chewbacca, the Death Star, the Millennium Falcon, and even Jabba the Hutt, kind of. Need we say more? 
A 281% increase in copies sold after the trailer dropped this week, $200 average sales on this raw book, and a 5,500 recent sale for a CGC 9.8. Now, the thing to keep in mind is that last time Tom and I talked about this book was in March, and we saw a 9.8 go for $1,920. And then, a couple weeks after that, we had one go for $5,000. And then right after that, one went for $4,500. And then, on May 2nd, we had one go for $3,600. 641. The market does not know where this is going to settle. There is a lot of people specking on Obi-Wan, but this is one of those books that people should have been in on for a very long time. Regardless of if you can afford a 9.8, this is such a major moment in Star Wars comics all taking place in one issue. Everyone's got to seriously consider owning this in their collection because long term, this book is not going anywhere. It's going to stay strong. It's so memorable and it has such a high collector value that it may see ebbs and flows just like over the last couple months that you just laid out but i see this being definitely worth more than 2k at a 9.8 and we've been saying that for years next at the list at number two we're talking superman 233 debuting in 1971 one of the most glorious one of the most superb superman comics breaking the kryptonite chains by legendary artist Neil Adams. Now, most of you know that last week, iconic legend Neil Adams passed away at the age of 80. And we know that he had been sick for a while, but it always comes as a shock because whenever we do lose someone in this industry, you're never prepared for it. And the fact that Neil Adams and Danny O'Neill and some of these other guys that helped us grow up and the comic books that we love they're going to be part of our childhood forever. So it just hurts when this happens. The word icon was created to describe individuals like Neil, whose legacy is so unparalleled and memorable. I find that when we lose members of our community that we really respect, one of the ways that collectors pay tribute is to get their work, you know? To, to secure it, to own it proudly. It's definitely something that I think is a way of dealing with the grief associated with this because none of us were expecting Neil to pass away and I think this is a good way to keep his memory alive. Comic fam, hit the like, slap the subscribe button. We know we need your support and no spoilers yet, but I'll let the community know I'm seeing Doctor Strange on Monday. So I'm going super light on IG, on Facebook this week because I am wanting to go in to get as surprised as I can. So number one on the list is no exception. We don't know where this book is going, but the community bought it right up until release. Number one on the list this week, we have a repeat offender, and the number one trending book this week is Captain Carter number one. We are seeing $12 average sales for the first print, but $325 for a CGC 9.8. The first appearance of Captain Carter in comic books, an increase of copies sold of 247%. And this all happened because of the final trailers of Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness showcasing who appears to be Peggy Carter grabbing that shield from the air, wielding it, and it really appears to be Captain Carter or possibly Captain Britain, but multiple books are spiking because of it. And with Doctor Strange coming so close, this is like the final numbers, the calm before the storm, or if the storm's even going to hit. Now, this book was hot when it was released a couple months ago, and there was a big amount of demand for the What If 1 in 25 animation variant. We're seeing massive sales on that this week. $157 for a raw sale, $645 for a CGC 9.8. And again, we don't know if the iron is really hot. We're just seeing a lot of sizzle right now, but I believe that this character is going to be around for a long time, and this is definitely a book that people should be picking up. Second printing is hitting $12 average sales, also causing a 318% uptick in copies sold week over week. There is a Virgin variant by David Nakayama, limited to 1,000 copies, hitting $30 average sales as well, all climbing. And really, we have to just wait and see what next week rolls out. Are we going to see this character in the future? Considering Captain America 4 is inbound, we know we have Sam Wilson anything goes hit the like slap the subscribe button comment it'll enter you to win a giveaway and as always keep responsibly enough said 
Ross, where can they find us every single Wednesday? The Whatnot app for nine solid hours of selling comics with $1 starts. As little as 15 seconds long on some of these auctions, Comic Fam. We're bringing the keys. We're bringing the giveaways. We even have an exclusive drop that we're going to be bringing in the next couple weeks. Join us on the app. Link in the description. What is the best new place to buy and sell funny books? We also have two other videos for you to check out. We made them for you. Enjoy them. No spoilers about Doctor Strange, please. We out. <laughs>